Well, uh, the, uh, the state, uh, through the governor's office, uh, conducts, I think, annual mission, trade mission trips to Japan. Uh, and, uh, and I had talked to a number of the other mayors uh, who had uh, gone on these trips regularly and they had developed relationships with Japanese companies and, and, uh, and, and fostered jobs in their community. So for years it's been intriguing to me that a few of the mayors around the city, uh, mayors of Logansport, Marion, Noblesville, uh, have been successful in building a bridge with uh, Japanese companies and, and, and particularly in the car, uh, car and auto industry. Uh, the, the state of Indiana has been very active in, uh, in, uh, in their efforts w in Japan. Uh, we are, I think, the only state in, in uh, the nation that has three Japanese car makers making cars in Indiana. So this is something the state's been doing on a, on a yearly basis and continually and has been very successful at it. Um, and so it was interesting to see the, uh, the efforts, to understand the efforts that have been going on for quite some time with Japan and to see the strong relationships that they've already forged there. Um, so, and that stood in contrast to China. China is an emerging country uh, that has experienced uh, phenomenal growth over the last several decades. Uh, and, and the governor was I think quite um, uh, pleased with the, that progress, but also he, he, I think he understood that um, Chinese uh, uh, businesses are now beginning to look globally. So the opportunity for China is coming on very strong, and this was a, a good trip to acclimate ourselves to that, to forge relationships with the Chinese government with Chinese businesses and to begin that process. I think he, we see that as the emerging frontier. From my standpoint, I mean, we also toured, uh, for instance, uh, Zhejiang, uh, Zhejiang University, uh, a large university there. Uh, we had on our trip uh, the president of Indiana University and the provost from Purdue. Uh, and so um, the thought that I had is that Valparaiso University is, has already uh, begun forging strong relationships with China. And I think it'd be helpful for the city to partner with them uh, and to help them build their Chinese international student population. And I think naturally from that we'll establish business relationships with, with uh, China, Chinese companies. So for me it was a paradigm shift. And also to see that it, in many ways it is a very entrepreneurial society. Uh, the Chinese government is allowing uh, companies to expand and to grow and they are doing the planning and investing in infrastructure necessary to, um, to augment that growth. But uh, for the most part, um, it, is, it is happening through private companies. Japan is a very mature and sophisticated economy, much like the U.S. And they are our, our closest friends uh, in, in Asia and very important to, uh, I think, uh, the economic stability of the entire world, but also to, uh, to ensuring good diplomatic relations. Uh, Japan has been very important to the U.S. Uh, and I believe China has that same opportunity. It just comes at a different time. I mean, it's hard to imagine the, the, the amount of growth and infrastructure investment in China. Um, the first morning when I looked out my hotel room, I, I had not been prepared for what I would see, the, the number uh, and vastness of the, of the skyscrapers around Shanghai. The thing that, that really struck me is that China is taking advantage of this unprecedented growth by reinvesting in the infrastructure economy. And, I mean, they have some advantages that we don't have, uh, and, uh, and, and one is, is they've been able to sort of leapfrog technology. Uh, our technology uh, uh, in, in the U.S. began, of course, decades ago, and, and we're having to retrofit to new technologies that develops. It's always more difficult and more expensive to retrofit to new technology than to start with the new technology. So, in that sense, since so many of their buildings and so much of their infrastructure, like their power grids, are new, they could just building the new technology. I mean, that, that, that's a tremendous advantage in some ways, and they're taking advantage of that. Um, we have to understand that it is not a democratic uh, uh, um, uh, country. 
um, and uh, and the their leaders are, are not elected. Um, and while it's hard for us to understand what it would be like to live in that in that type of a country, and, and we certainly appreciate our democracy, um, to some degree um, they are able to react more quickly because it, uh, the decision comes down from the central government and it's enacted quickly. Uh, the level of debate is less than in a democratic society. Um, and so uh, they are more, to some degree, more agile in, in making decisions and quicker to respond. And, uh, and so that is a difference. Uh, we have to build in a democratic society more consensus and, and, and certainly there's some advantages to that. Uh, we visited uh, an industrial park where Eli Lilly has a strong presence and talked to a company that is uh, partnering with them there. Uh, their, their incubators are uh, expansive and sophisticated. Um, uh, we rode on the bullet uh, train uh, trains and uh, I mean they have a, what they call the maglev train which goes up to 240 miles an hour and so and they're building uh, they're expanding that uh, infrastructure uh, their transportation infrastructure all the time they have to because it's 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 a much different economy than, than ours is ours is much more spread out and, and uh, theirs is much more concentrated in some ways uh, we should see ourselves as a global city, um, particularly with a university that has strong ties to China. Uh, I, knew, I know that uh, Valparaiso University has uh, created the Confucius Institute as a way of strengthening their ties to, uh, to China. They have many Chinese students. Um, and I think it's helpful for us as a city administration to partner with university once again, but in this realm, to, uh, to share uh, our resources and uh, to combine our resources to uh, enhance uh, our you know, global awareness and global opportunities for our citizens. I, I think it's helpful uh, for the, uh, the mayor of, of a city to understand the, the global impact upon uh, his or her community. I mean, sometimes we, we get engaged in all the detail and, and we don't see the big picture, but, but for a mayor or a leader of a company or a university, their job is to see the big picture. Their job is to look out into the future. And, and so that's what this trip was all about, is to understand the, how uh, globalization is affecting our, our city, our university, our community, and to try to envision ways to take advantage of that to find the opportunity in that and to, uh, to expand our horizons as a city.